So you probably had a few gin and tonics in your time, but have you ever stopped to think about what tonic water actually is? Well, we're gonna change that. We're talking about what tonic water is, how it's made, a little bit about the history, all the top brands, and maybe touch on how to mix it too. And we're starting right now. G'day folks, for those of you who are new here, my name's Tim and welcome to Tim and Tonic, where we discover the world's best gins and how to drink them. So ironically today, we're not talking about gin at all. We're talking about gin's best friend, the tonic water. So let's just dive in straight away and talk about what tonic water actually is. Well, historically, tonic water is simply a mixture of carbonated water, or you might hear it called soda water or seltzer or club soda, depending on which part of the world you're from. And also the main flavoring agent, which is called quinine, or again, you might hear it called quinine for my American friends out there. There's also usually quite a bit of sugar or other kinds of sweeteners added, plus a little bit of a kind of acidic or citrus flavor note, just to bring some balance to all those sweet flavors. The reason for all the extra sugar and sweetness is because of the quinine. It's actually super, super bitter. Now, back in the day, it was used as a medicine, so they had to do this to get people to actually take it. But nowadays, we just drink it because we like tonic water, especially with gin. So some of those medicinal properties of quinine are treating malaria, relieving fevers, and also relieving tense muscles and cramps. Now, by no means, this is not medical advice. If you have any of those things, don't go out and just drink a whole bunch of these tonic waters. Make sure you go and see a doctor. So that's the bare basics of what tonic water is. Before we get on, one of my subscribers actually asked me to make this video. They wanted to learn more about tonic, which was an amazing suggestion by Annalisa. But if you guys have any other suggestions, hit me up down in the comments below. Let me know what you want to see next on the channel. So we just started touching on it, but tonic water actually has quite the interesting history about it. So the very first source of quinine comes from the bark of the cinchona tree, which is native to the Andes Indian ranges in South America. Now, centuries and centuries ago, the indigenous people of this area, they already knew that this tree had medicinal properties. They would take the bark and they would actually chew on it. And what they would do that for is to relieve fevers. So fun little fact, because of this, the cinchona tree eventually became known more colloquially as the fever tree, which now you might recognize that name because it's one of the top brands of tonic in the world. It wasn't until the 1600s when Europeans came down to South America and they saw and learned from the indigenous people about all these medicinal properties. So they started grinding the bark down into a powder and taking it back with them to Europe. For just under 300 years, the cinchona bark was the only known cure for malaria. And nowadays we kind of think it as this more tropical kind of disease, but back then it was everywhere. It was all across Europe. And thanks to this cinchona bark, plus general improvements in public health, eventually it was eradicated in the Western world. The real medical breakthroughs after that didn't come all the way until the 1800s, where scientists discovered how to refine the quinine from the cinchona bark. At the same time, they also discovered that not only could the quinine be used to treat malaria, it could also be used to prevent malaria. The first actual brand of tonic water was patented back in 1858 in England by the name of Pitts. Now, it wasn't back then used actually as a medical treatment. It was more kind of a general health tonic and a digestive. But by this time, quinine was already super popular as a medicine mixed with alcohol. They were mixing it with pretty much any alcohol you can think of, like gin, rum, brandy, you name it, wine even, they used it as a medicine. And it's really because of the cinchona bark and quinine that the British Empire was able to expand so far because all the people that went away, they took the cinchona bark with them. They even planted trees of the cinchona in India so that they wouldn't get sick and die. And that's kind of how we ended up with the gin and tonic. So the British soldiers in India, every day they had to take a ration of quinine to make sure they didn't catch malaria. So they mixed it with sugar and a little bit of water to actually make it drinkable. They also had a ration of gin. So they started to add the gin to make it taste even nicer again. And not long after that, this first brand of tonic water started spreading across all those British colonies. And in those hotter climates, people just really enjoyed it to kind of try and adapt and cool themselves off. So from here, you can probably put two and two together, kind of people really really like the taste of this tonic water and they really like the taste of this gin, sugar and quinine mix. So it just became a really easy way to mix your gin with the tonic water to replicate
out that taste, which everyone absolutely loved at the time. And the rest, as they say, is history. Today, we're still left with that humble gin and tonic. So now we've talked about what tonic water is. We've talked about the past of tonic water. Let's bring it to the present and talk about all the brands and flavor profiles of tonic water you can find on the market today. Now, by no means is this gonna be an exhaustive list. There's hundreds of brands of tonic water now with the rise in popularity of gin, if not thousands. I'm just gonna go through some of the most popular ones globally. Now, it wouldn't be a video on tonic water unless we talked about this little guy over here, the Schweppes Indian tonic water. And the reason for that is because Schweppes is one of the oldest brands and also probably the number one selling by volume of tonic water in the world. You can find it in almost any country, any supermarket, any bar, any pub, you name it. You'll probably find them pouring Schweppes as their choice. Now the Schweppes probably does have one of the highest sugar concentrations out of any of the commercial tonic waters in the world. And I also find it has quite an artificial citrus note to it. I think the flavor profile of the Schweppes nowadays, it kind of gears itself more to drinking on its own rather than with a really high quality gin. And that's because it kind of just drowns out all the subtle botanicals. That extra sugar and extra flavoring, it just all gets a little bit lost in there. I definitely recommend taking a step up to the next level of tonic water if you're really getting serious about your gin drinking, but in a pinch, if that's all you've got, it does work pretty well, kind of in a pub with a house pour kind of basic gin. Very, very drinkable, very, very easy. Now, the next most common brand of tonic water you'll probably come across is this little guy here, the Fever Tree. Now, Fever Tree's been around for quite a while, since 2004, so not that long in the history of gin and tonics, but long enough for most people watching this video right now. And it was one of the very first tonic waters to really carve out that premium sector of the tonic market. It's a UK based brand, but it's pretty much exported all across the world these days. I think you can find it in about 50 different countries. And this one here, their classic Indian tonic, it's pretty much become the benchmark of premium tonic that all the other brands aspire to be. It's really become the most iconic brand of tonic water on the market, absolutely full stop. Flavor wise, I find it a little bit more natural and refined than the Schweppes tonic water. Plus it also has 20% less sugar. So it makes a really great starting point for any gin and tonic. Now an honorable mention must go to this guy here, the Fentiman's tonic water, which is probably the next most iconic premium brand of tonic water after the Fever Tree. I've got their light tonic version here. Now for my Australian viewers out there, we've got some absolutely amazing brands being made right here in Australia. I've got three of them with me right here. The Cappy here is probably the best all rounder, kind of sits alongside these Fever Tree and the Fentiman's. The Strange Love I find super interesting. It's absolutely one of my my personal favorites. It's got this more kind of interesting incense like character though to it, the number eight tonic water. So make sure you pair it with the right gin. And then finally, we have the Long Rays. The Long Rays is absolutely delicious. It's really becoming this kind of like little cult following and a gin lover's choice. A little bit lighter on the flavor and goes great with pretty much any gin and lets all the botanicals shine. Now, as you can probably tell from all these bottles just here, plus all the different flavored tonics waters you see on the market now, there's so many different styles beyond just even some of these classic ones I have just here. So there's a few little bits of terminology you're gonna see on these bottles, which I'm just gonna quickly go through so that you understand what it all means. Now, the first term you're gonna see, we talked about it briefly already, is the Indian tonic water. Now, why Indian tonic water? Well, it's not actually made in India. But what happened back in the day when this cinchona bark was discovered by the Europeans, it was mainly from Peru and the Peruvian kind of natives, they really wanted to keep all the money and the glory for themselves. So they started trying to put taxes on it and all sorts of things like that. So what happened? Europeans smuggled some seeds out all across their different colonies in the world, started setting up plantations, harvesting the cinchona bark for their own use, and they didn't need to pay the Peruvians. And most of these plantations were based in India and Indonesia because they kind of had the right climate to grow the cinchona trees. Plus as well, as we talked about, India was that place where they were mixing the sugar, water, quinine, and gin. So it kind of all makes sense. So nowadays it's pretty much just a marketing term to signify a classic style of tonic water. So the next most common category of tonic water is your light tonic waters, your dry tonic waters, or maybe even you might hear called them sugar-free tonic waters. Now, unfortunately, it's a little bit confusing here because they're not all created equal. 
broadly speaking, there's two categories. There's one where you've got those sugars that have been replaced with artificial sweeteners or maybe even natural ones like stevia, whatever it may be. Personally, not too much of a fan of those. I don't like the taste of them. And there's no real, other than the less calories or if you can't have sugar for medical reasons, there's no real benefit over these other kind of tonic waters that have the sugar. But my favorite ones, they don't have those artificial sweeteners. They're actually just lower in sugar, like this Fentimans or even the Cappy Dry here. They're absolutely great with gin. They just let the botanicals shine. The cloying sugar just doesn't overwhelm it. Really great starting point for any gin and tonic. And the final category is flavored tonic waters. These six here, I don't have any flavored tonic waters amongst them, but I do have some just off the side here. Fever Tree make an absolutely delicious range. They've got an elderflower one. We've got this aromatic one, which is mixed with Angostura bark, which is kind of like the same ingredient from Angostura bitters. They've got a lemon flavored tonic water. They've got a Mediterranean one, which I don't have here. As you can see, the sky is the limit. There's absolutely no limit on what flavored tonic waters you can find. Now let's just pop these ones back off to the side. Now flavored tonic waters, I find they're a little bit more particular. You kind of have to play with them and see which gins they go with. But when you get the right combination, it's absolutely amazing. You can get these interesting combinations, different flavors from the botanicals, which come out from the different flavors of gin. I really enjoy playing around with them. They do tend to be a little bit sweeter sometimes though. So guys, this channel is about gin after all. So you're probably wondering how to pair all these different tonic waters with the different gins that are on the market. Maybe you've been wondering how to make the perfect gin and tonic. Well, got the answer for you. Click through to the video here for the next one in the series. It's a little bit old. I'm gonna remake it very soon, but check it out in the meantime. Also hit subscribe just up here so you don't miss out on the new video when it comes out. I'm very thirsty after all this. I'm gonna go make myself a gin and tonic. So cheers guys. See you next time.